Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software tour of the Acer Tempo M900. Now, Acer has added a lot of software to the M900. A lot of it comes from the old Eaton devices, and that's kind of unfortunate because it's kind of haphazardly thrown together software. But there is some new and cool stuff, and we're going to go through that now. And we're going to cover everything in full detail on the final review of PocketNow.com. You just heard I got an email. Um, so this is the this is the shell. They call this Acer shell, and basically it's a three-looking interface that's trying to emulate the desktop experience. So you have um, an a, an envelope on your desktop which implies email and it tells you the day and the the time and your next appointments so let's go through all these items a lot of these things are hot linkable so if we tap on the little envelope we are taken to our email and a very touch flow 3d like display so we can flick our finger to go through our email it's kind of a slow way to go through the email I think I much rather go right into the inbox but uh, it's a it's a visually pleasing to go through your messages Another thing you can do is tap where it says messages here and see the same kind of display and tap through your text messages. If we tap on where it says today, we are taken to our calendar. Just a quick link to the calendar. If we tap on the device right there, it'll actually take you to your call history. And the one implies that I've got one missed call. If we tap on the date over here, we are taken into kind of a world traveler um, time display. So we can sw you know, choose between Philadelphia, where we are now, we can go to London, and it'll spin the globe. This part is kind of a novelty. I'm not sure why it needs to have a picture of where it is on the map, but it looks kind of nice. If we tap on the window, we will actually get the weather. And the weather for the cities that are pre-configured um, based on the previous screen where you set in the cities that you want to see for the time. So we can tap to London and see the weather in London. And again, the globe moves and shows you exactly where you're going. So a nice way to kind of get the weather um, on this interface. Let's go back. Okay, now let's flick to the next panel over to the right. So from here, we can access our pictures, photo gallery. So if we tap on the picture frame, we are taken to a very touch flow 3D like interface where we can flick our finger up and down and go through the pictures and if we tap on a picture it'll open up in the Acer gallery and from there you can email a picture, set it as background and do all those sorts of things. If we tap on the Rolodex we'll actually get a list of people that we call on a regular basis. A bunch of pictures, if there's a picture assigned to their um, their contact card you'll get their picture if not you'll just get another placeholder icon so this is kind of a quick way to dial people though I much rather press the call start button and go to my recent call list and just go right into the uh, the person I want to call finally over here there is a button or a section for media playback and it'll show you the album art if there is any and you can play music right from here you can manage your media just like you would on an HTC device in the Media tab. I think a lot of this comes from TouchFlow 3D. And again, if you tap on the window here, you can see the window is kind of continued. Um, you will get the weather. One more over to the right. This is the final part of the shell. Uh, if we tap on what looks to be a... I don't even know what that is. It looks like a calculator, but it's not. If you tap on that, it'll give you a program launcher called the Quick Menu. Again, this comes right out of TouchFlow 3D. If we tap on the ruler and the pen, we are taken to some links to do things on our device that we want to do, like change the backlight, adjust the sound profiles, communication manager, things like that. And finally, if we tap on the picture of the globe, we get our internet favorites as they are set in Pocket Internet Explorer, although it looks kind of crappy on the screen. Uh, the, the letters are jumbled together, so it doesn't look well optimized for this, this device. Now this mobile shell uses 20 megabytes of RAM and for a device that already has a huge deficiency of program memory for such a high-end device, here I'll show you right now, um, that's a big problem. So right now we only have 23 megabytes of program memory free, meaning you're not going to get a lot of multitasking out of this. If you unload the, the shell program uh, or take it off, you actually get 40 megabytes free, which is still very, very low. And if I go into the task manager, I'll show you what's open right now. Pretty much nothing. Active Sync Calendar and the task manager. And we only have 23 megabytes of free program memory available. So I am going to turn off the shell for the rest of this demonstration. Okay, so here we are in programs, and we're going to go f through a few things right now. Um, in terms of screen sensitivity, the screen sensitivity is quite good. It's not as good as the Touch Pro 2 or the Diamond 2, but it's probably a little bit better than the old Touch Pro and the old Diamond. And at, at times, 
there's, I think, a bug with the screen where you have to press on an icon several times in order for the press to get registered. You, maybe you'll see that during this demonstration. And also a note on screen rotation speed, it's very, very fast. It's almost as fast as the Touch Pro 2, just about instant, so that is not a problem. All right, so let's go through this. Let's go to multimedia. So this does have an FM radio, which is good. It's, uh, it'll look familiar if you're used to the old E10 devices that wants you to attach a headset. So a simple FM radio, camera, 5 megapixel camera. We're going to cover photo quality in full in the review. Streaming player so that you can watch m.youtube.com. And uh, album is the photo album. And again, we'll talk about all this stuff in detail. Let's get to some more interesting stuff. Let's see what we have in utilities. Uh, we have the backup utility, which is a simple backup program um, that lets you back up certain parts of your device. And it looks like it's backing up right now, and I don't want it to do that. Memory optimization, which is actually kind of funny. It'll automatically reset your device on a scheduled basis so that it clears out all of the uh, programs in RAM. And this may actually be a good idea to use this because there's such a deficiency of RAM on the, the M900. And then we have a program for AGPS, and here's the communication manager, which has been skinned a little bit for the, uh, the Acer device. Going down, and by the way, it does have flick scrolling although sometimes it's a little clunky and goes a little too much or not enough. Going down, we have some other things like zoom status, which is actually pretty cool. Um, if you remember in the HTC Touch Pro, if you tapped on the notification areas, you would get these zoomed in buttons so that they're much larger. Well, the same is the case here in the M900, except I think it's done a little nicer. So we can close things, or we can go back up there and tap on this memory manager, which will actually give you a task manager, and you can see how much free RAM you have or stop all of the applications. But let's go back to where we were before. Oh, missed it there. And so that is Zoom status. I installed Skyfire and Opera Mobile. This doesn't come with a better browser like Skyfire or Opera Mobile, but of course those browsers are free to download. Tweakini is an awesome Twitter client, by the way. And let's go into settings because there's some interesting stuff in there to talk about. So let's talk about the biometric security, right? It has a fingerprint scanner built into the bottom, which can be used in several different ways. It can be used, and see the screen's not responding. Here it comes. Let me swipe my finger. It can be used to unlock your device after it comes out of standby. So let's say when you power it on, you want the prompt to come up to swipe your finger. Or you can have when your calendar contacts, tasks, or inbox is opened, a prompt comes up to swipe your finger. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to turn off the device, then turn it back on, and it should prompt me to swipe my finger. Yep, there we go. So I can't do anything unless I swipe my finger. Sensitivity is really great on the biometrics. And of course, to edit any settings in the Golden Finger application, you have to swipe your finger. You can also protect a folder on your device with the security. I'm going to need the stylus now because things are getting kind of small down here. You can actually protect a folder, which is cool. And this is how you register a finger. It's very easy. You swipe your finger four times. And there are some other settings here. So it's a pretty cool application to use if you want to have an added level of security for your device, if you're afraid that someone's going to pick up your phone at work. We can also change the Today Soft keys. We can customize them. So right now it's set to speed dial and private folder. But there's a whole host of things we can choose, which is great. A lot of devices don't let you customize the soft keys. Okay, let's go over to system. We have some unique entries to talk about here. This device has an accelerometer, but it only works in certain screens that you dictate. So it's not working right now. But if I tap on the icon, I can choose which program the G sensor will work in. So obviously you want to do something like Internet Explorer. If you're using Skyfire in Office Mobile, you don't want to have it turned on in all screens because it really doesn't make sense to have it rotate, especially because you have the slide-out keyboard to automatically rotate it at, at any time. And you can adjust the sensitivity, which is great, so that if you're walking down the steps and you jiggle your device, it doesn't ac accidentally go into the, the landscape orientation. Now here's something real cool. Uh, you can actually use the biometric pad for more than just security. You can use it for navigation. You can use it as an eight-way D-pad, a four-way rocker, a joystick, a mouse, a touch stick, although I'm not really sure the difference between a lot of these. Um, if we use the mouse, watch this. It'll give you a tiny little mouse on the screen. Very, very small. You see it over there? I think it's a little too small to be usable. 
Um, but it'll definitely help a little bit with one-handed usability. I've been keeping it on the D-pad setting because it gets way too sensitive when, the ma when you're using it as a mouse. In addition, you can actually tap down on the button gently or the, the, the security pad and have it select. So if I go to the start menu, let me try to get the little mouse up to the start menu, and I tap, it'll open up the start menu. So pretty cool there, added functionality. So again, I like to leave it on the D-pad, and that way I can move my finger to the left. It doesn't always work so well, but it's a good feature to have um, if you can get used to the, the feel of the of swiping your finger and adjust the sensitivity so it's just right. It can really help for one-handed usability and kind of bring back a D, the D-pad because, um, you know, of course, the Touch Pro 2 doesn't have a D-pad or any way to have a multi-directional input method down here. Okay, so let's go down to see if there's anything else that's interesting. Something called touch control, which will actually stipulate the sensitivity of the flick scrolling, so nothing too interesting there. And over in connections, they do have a connection wizard that is supposed to configure your device to what, what carrier you are on. I'm using this on AT&T in the US, I'm getting HSDPA, but for some reason when I choose uh, AT&T from the drop-down list, it doesn't configure the device properly. So here it is, AT&T wireless. I had to manually put in the settings to get it to work. So overall, I'm not too impressed with the software on the uh, M900. I find that the Acer Shell program that we talked about in the beginning is kind of a ripoff of TouchFlow 3D. It doesn't really bring anything unique. It doesn't have much utility. It's a lot of it's a novelty. It looks kind of cool. The concept's interesting, but the implementation's not that great. It requires a lot of screen taps. Also, the software on the M900 is somewhat buggy. In terms of flick scrolling, it doesn't always work right or it works too fast or too slow. Sometimes icons don't select when you tap on them. Um, also, another weird behavior is that my internet connection settings, which I've had to enter manually, sometimes disappear for no reason. Within the last few days, they just disappear. Um, I'm going to try hard resetting this and bringing it back to factory condition, maybe not installing all of the software that comes on it because it gives you the option to check or uncheck certain pieces of software. Anyway, we're going to cover everything in full in the review on pocketnow.com. If you haven't seen the unboxing or hardware tour video, I'll put it up on the screen right now, and you can get to those. And again, the M900 right now is shipping at Clove Technology. That's clove.co.uk. And it's cost about $80 less than the Touch Pro 2. And it, of course, it does US 3G, which a lot of people will be happy about. So we'll be back with a full review soon. That's it for now.